While it's true that all types can have meaningful relationships with all other types, some relationships just seem to flow a little bit easier than others. How much of that is down to type preferences? Do you believe in opposites attract? Or is it better to be similar? I'm on record as saying that type saved my marriage, and in this video I'll show you some scientific research results into attraction and marital satisfaction for the different types to help you decide whether to swipe right on your next match. I'll do it the sensing way this time, first giving you the details of the individual papers, and then I'll show the intuitive overview at the end. As always, I'll provide links to the papers in the description. First up, the validity of the MBTI for predicting expressed marital problems. We already talked about prediction being one of those things, but this 1993 paper analyzed responses from 67 couples who have been married at least five years. The authors set out to test three findings from previous research that couples are likely to be more similar than different in terms of type preferences, that the more preferences you have in common, the less likely you are to experience marital problems, and that opposite preferences can predict problem areas. Their study had participants where 9% of the couples were the same on all four preferences, so exactly the same types, 25% were the same on three, 30% were the same on two, 25% again had one preference in common, and then 10% were complete opposites and had no preferences in common. Sadly, the authors don't share the actual types they were working with, but the distribution of preferences in common is pretty similar to other research they reference. In addition to participants filling out the handwritten MBTI Form G, the researchers made up their own questionnaire asking questions into 38 areas of common marriage issues relating, for example, to sex, money, in-laws, parenting, all sorts of communication, different things. Participants filled in the forms and then returned them in envelopes and then they were transferred into a computer, presumably by a researcher. Research showed that husbands and wives had a high correlation and agreement on reporting their problem areas, except for those where you would typically expect some sort of secrecy, like alcohol and drug abuse. However, the authors did not find that having similar types protected a couple from having problems. And that's something we'll see in another paper as well. Or that the kind of difference would predict the kind of issue that the couple experienced. Again, MBTI, Never been predictive, but okay. So they conclude that additional research is needed to test whether type preferences and marriage problems have closer correlations in specific problem areas and maybe during specific times of the relationships. But here is the one or actually two glaringly obvious problems that I have with this methodology. You never give the MBTI to a couple to do together without express instructions for people to fill in the forms individually alone by themselves. I have worked with couples and the temptation to look over your partner's shoulder and say, oh no, but you're actually more like that, is, it happens more than you think. The researchers also didn't mention whether they were even qualified to administer the tool or whether participants actually had a session afterwards to confirm their results. So as they describe it, I would say this test and tell method has a 50-50 chance of even producing the correct types. Likewise, what do you think happens when you put your spouse next to you to fill out a form about marriage problems? No wonder results showed remarkably consistent correlations unless you're already in therapy or is absolutely confidential. The likelihood of you giving your actual rating of sex, money, in-laws issues is low. Come on. So yeah, sorry, but I'm having serious doubts about this methodology and these results. Another paper that's actually a dissertation went into a little more detail. Dr. Hicks, the author, analyzed results from the MBTI and the MSI, that's the Marriage Satisfaction Inventory, for 100 couples. 40 of these couples were in therapy and the remaining 60 were not. Specifically, the therapy group and the happily married groups were compared by how many MBTI preferences they had in common, the strength or the clarity of these preferences, and the length of time they were married. 
Among many, many other items, she examined the extraversion introversion scale and the sensing judging temperament of the MBTI by comparing the spousal combinations in each of the groups. She chose these combos based in part on Jung's comments that opposites are more likely to attract on the extraversion introversion dimension and that exactly these differences later lead to conflict. She also assumed that there would be more SJ couples in the therapy than in the happy group and more introverted wives in the satisfied compared to the therapy group. The results actually show no significant differences between groups as far as number of preferences in common, length of time married, and the sensing judging temperament. But contrary to her assumption, there were significantly more extroverted wives in the satisfied group. And she also found twice as many people with sensing preferences in the therapy group. There were also significantly more couples in the therapy group who had differences of 40 or more points on the four MBTI scales. And here's where I want to go into a little bit more detail. These points indicate how consistently someone chooses one preference over the other. Not to be confused with how much of a preference they have, because as I mentioned before, traits measure how much of something you have, but with type you choose between two equally viable and valuable options. So if you get an MBTI result that seems kind of close to the border, in the middle, that doesn't mean that you are between the two dichotomies. You might actually think of that middle line as a border, like a country border. If you live in El Paso, you're in America, and if you're in Ciudad Juarez, you're in Mexico. So even if you have a slight preference for thinking, that is still a thinking preference. The fact that the preference is slight is probably an indication that somebody didn't explain the instrument to you properly, and you thought it was a good idea to hedge your bets and answer everything like you're in the middle. Or you're, you know, in midlife and have lived abroad and held many different jobs and you genuinely don't remember what you were like in your 20s. Both things uh, can be true. So the interesting finding was there were couples with the sensing intuiting combination both in the therapy and the satisfied group but the amount of difference or the, the, the discrepancy in clarity on the sensing and intuitive dimension of the MBTI is most likely the factor that causes more global dissatisfaction for couples. People with clear sensing and clear intuiting preferences perceive the world in very different ways, so it's not a complete surprise. There is a more recent Korean study that seems to support this finding. The authors of this paper analyzed results from 62 couples using MBTI, marital satisfaction scale, marital status inventory, positive affect inventory, and conflict regulation inventory. So that's a lot of questionnaires. And they found statistically significant increases in divorces for couples who were different on the sensing intuiting dimensions. They also found significantly more divorces, less positive affect, and less emotional regulation in couples where at least one partner had ISTJ or ESTJ preferences. I'm going to put a huge caveat on this one because the paper was in Korean and I used Google Translate. So maybe if you read it for yourself and if you speak Korean, please leave a comment. Back to Dr. Hicks, the differences on the extraversion introversion or EI scale were correlated with couples satisfaction in time together and effective communication, so affective communication. Right? Couples where both partners were extroverted reported high satisfaction on time together and affective communication, EI mixed couples were in the middle, and couples where both partners were introverted reported the most difficulty in these areas. This also goes to show that just because you and your partner have a letter in common, it doesn't mean you won't have any issues. By the same token, just because the two introverts scored low on affective communication, it doesn't mean that these generalized into global dissatisfaction with the whole relationship. So this study also had its limitations. Of course, for example, an assumption was that couples who came to therapy would all have a high degree of this global dissatisfaction with the whole relationship. In fact, six of the couples in, therapy, in that therapy group did not because they entered therapy to work on a specific issue. 11 of those couples only had one spouse who expressed 
a general dissatisfaction. And again, a larger sample size would have been, you know, preferable and great. So one more piece of research and then we'll bring it all together. This 1996 paper on attraction and satisfaction used the MBTI form J with 426 married and premarital couples. 271 were in therapy and 155 were not in therapy. If you remember that earlier paper used form G, so the letters just stand for whatever updated version you have. Form J was updated from, from G. Now we are up to form M for the step one instrument and form Q for the step two instrument. Anyway, the researchers computed an attraction ratio for couples of the exact same type and the exact opposite types based on the expected distribution of the 16 types in the general population. Results indicate that like types tend to be attracted to and marry each other more than unlike types. So especially among intuitive and feeling types and generally speaking on the sensing intuiting and the thinking and feeling scales. There were two exceptions where opposites seemed to attract more and those were ESTJ men marrying INFP women and ESTP men marrying INFJ women with ISTG, uh, sorry, ISTJ men showing a tendency to marry ENFP women. So ESTJ and ISTJ men were also the two types who had been married the most often. It seems they are fine to make quick decisions to marry and quick decisions to get out of the marriage, but it's unknown whether these divorces were all two opposite types. It does, however, ring a little bit true with what we saw in that Korean study earlier as well. So how satisfied did those attractions of the like partners then uh, turn out to be? Both partners are more likely to be satisfied when the men are extroverted or INFPs. And INTP men apparently tend to have the lowest percentage of relationships where both partners are happy. So what does this mean? The research showed that the top three male types who had the highest discrepancy in reporting they were happy, but their partners weren't, were INTP with 33%, INFJ with 31% and ISFP with 22%. Compared to there are also oblivious women, it appears, who are ENFJ and ENFP with 13 and 12% respectively. So lower, but there's still an obliviousness or an, an uncertainty going on. And actually, it might be, you know, speaking up for the NF women, maybe it was just, you know, making the most of it and being optimistic. This paper also suggests that closeness on the sensing and intuiting scale is important for attraction and that it may actually be the similarity on the extroversion introversion scale that is more important for staying satisfied in the relationship. So going back to what Jung said earlier. In summary, I want to take us back to the first paper I reviewed. Even though I have grave doubts about their findings, I wholeheartedly agree with this paragraph in their discussion. In view of the results of the present study, combined with the paucity of other results, it seems prudent to present the MBTI to couples as one of several possible ways to facilitate mutual understanding. Yes. The test may be helpful in opening lines of communication and in helping to convey the idea that some marital problems evolve from differences in the way members of a couple perceive the world rather than from deliberate maliciousness, argumentativeness or stubbornness. Yes. In other words, the test should be viewed as a tool which may be helpful for some couples but should not be viewed as a panacea capable of explaining the full rage and complexity of marital discord. Yes. <laughs> so if you and your partner would like to compare your types and have a chat about how those differences might show up in everyday arguments, go to my website and set up a free curiosity convo. I'd love to speak with you. That's it from me for now. Thank you so much and I'll see you again next time.